junior high school. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. I didn't really realize too much about challenges and obstacles till I went to junior high school, or otherwise known as middle school, depending on your age. Um, everybody here remember junior high, middle school, the reason so many of us went into therapy? <laughs> Well, I entered junior high school as a nice, teacher-liking, homework-loving theater geek. And if that wasn't bad enough, I was also tall. I mean, so tall, so tall, taller than anybody in my class, including the boys. Yeah, and so, of course, you know, I have evidence of this. A picture is certainly worth a thousand words. Gee! Which one of these two people is me? <laughs> Could it be the skyscraper in the back? <laughs> yes, the other person is my friend Kira, almost identically my age, right? Story of my life, you're looking at it. But I didn't really realize that it was going to be such a massive obstacle for me until I went to my very first junior high school dance. <laughs> I'm wearing. My best hip hugger, land lubber, skin tight bell bottoms <laughs> that have been lengthened on the bottom with a strip of red, white, and blue denim. <laughs> it is, after all, 1970. I am a little hippie girl. Thank you very much. My hair is long and parted down the middle like every other girl in the eighth grade. And. I am wearing my brother's peace sign around my neck. Yeah! Oh, and I cannot wait to go to this dance. You know why I can dance? I've learned how to dance. Yep, my friend Michelle's older sister, Nancy, has taught me how. And I've been practicing in front of the mirror every night. So, Ma drives me to the school, she drops me off in front of the gym, it's all decorated for the occasion, the lights are low, 60s rock and roll, and I got a DaVita, baby. <laughs> I saunter to the back of the gymnasium and I lean against the black light poster, and I wait for somebody to ask me to dance. And I wait. Anybody? Oh, 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 there's my friend Joni. Joni's dancing. Joni, yeah, wow, look at her go, yeah. Yeah, Joni is blonde and blue-eyed and cute and short. <laughs> oh, there's my other friend. There's my friend Ashley. Hey, Ash, oh my God, Ashley's just dancing. One song after the next, oh my gosh. Ashley's blonde and green-eyed and cute and short. Oh, and now the night is just whooshing by, whizzing by, and not one boy has asked me to dance. Not one boy has asked me to dance, and Mommy's going to come pick me up really soon, and I'm going to have to tell her, Ma, no boy asked me to dance. Not one boy asked me to dance. When all of a sudden, Striding confidently toward me, with a little glint in his eye, is Stephen Whittington. Stephen Whittington, no bigger than a minute. <laughs> and he asks me to dance. Well, look, okay, I know. I mean, he's not my ideal dance partner, but he asked. He asked. He has cojones. <laughs> And so I say, yeah. <laughs> and he pulls me out onto the dance floor, and then he takes his sweaty little palms, and he places them against my long hair, against my back, so that my pubescent chest in all its glory pops out. <laughs> and then he takes his happy, sweaty little face, and he puts it right here. <laughs> And then we dance to the longest slow dance known to man. <laughs> hey Jude. <laughs> na, 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 na. And, and as I looked 
down at the part in little Stephen Whittington's hair, I think, oh, oh, please, please let it get better than this. <laughs> I stood out just by standing up. So, okay, all right. So now you know my philosophy. You know, touch the sky, make your mark, don't play small. So what do you think I did back then, based on this new challenge? What do you think I did in the face of it? Uh, let's take a poll, shall we? Let's take a poll. Raise your hands if you think, in the face of this particular challenge, that I chose to touch the sky. Raise your hands. <laughs> and how many people here think that I chose to play small? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Group number two, you win. Yeah, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but I did. I chose to play small. I chose to play small so that other people could feel bigger, especially the boys. I, I admit this. I wore flats, and, and I learned how to schlump. I, I actually became the queen of schlumping. Stick a hip out like this, right? And then you kind of walk like a duck, but it's very <laughs> uncomfortable. But you kind of, you know, you can kind of stand there and it kind of shaves off a couple inches, you know? Yeah, but that's not the worst thing I did, okay? No. The worst thing I did was downplay my passions, my talents, my abilities, my needs and desires. I downplayed my Elaniness, my uniqueness. I neglected the song in me by playing small and giving over to the obstacle. So, so I got to ask, has anybody in this room ever done that? Raise your hand. Raise them high, I want to see the armpits. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, I'm not just talking about making yourself physically small, you know that. I'm talking about making yourself appear less smart or less capable or less talented or less worthy than you really are. Now look, it's bad enough that there are obstacles outside of our control, like tornadoes or job layoffs, that keep us from our dreams and desires. But it's even worse when we choose to become our own obstacles. In fact, our own worst obstacles by becoming what I call a parts car. Who knows what a parts car is in here? Anybody? What's a parts car? Yeah. It's a car that you take parts from to make other cars work better. The perfect description. That's absolutely what it is. A parts car. Now, now, now I know it's hard to believe this, but... We can be human part scars, unfortunately. And see, as a human part scar, you give the best parts of yourself away, part by part, bit by bit, to help somebody else feel better, look better, feel bigger. And then you wonder why your stripped down, sorry self is stuck and stalled by the side of the road. Now, as admins, Look, you have that bone. You got that bone that wants to help. You got the help bone. I want to be of help. And, and, you know, you like to help others, and you're really good at it. You're helpful, and you're capable, and you, know, you can do a million things simultaneously. You're that way by nature, and you will do and do and do and give and give and give until it hurts. As admins, I know, as a fellow giver here, okay, it's really easy to slip into what I call parts car-itis. And then many of you are women, though I, I noticed men raise your hands in this room. Stand up, men. Stand up. Yes. I am very happy to see you here today. You may be seated. But many of you are women in this room, and, you know, women, unfortunately, have traditionally been parts cars for years, and, and generation after generation. I mean, I can hear the first cave woman now. No, it's, so, it's okay, dear. Go hunting for three months and leave me with winter coming and our six kids and the gathering and the cooking and the sewing of the pelts and the cleaning of the cave 
and your three cranky menopausal aunts. <laughs> you know, I was going to sign up for a month-long basket weaving course at the next cave because, you know, I'm, I'm, I actually think I have a knack for that. But, you know, it's, it can wait. It's certainly not as important as you going after that big old mastodon, my sweet and hairy angel. <laughs> Being a human parts car can leave you exhausted and downright cranky, or as my mother-in-law from down south says, downright ornery. <laughs> ornery, ornery, ornery. And that's why I'd like you to join me in taking the parts car pledge. Everybody on your feet. Everybody stand up. Everybody raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise, I promise. to say no when I need to, to, to say yes to what I really need, to honor myself, to honor the song in me, and not be a parts car ever, 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 ever again. I like all those evers. Very nice. You may be seated. Now, you had, I think, like 299 witnesses to that. And if you count the three gentlemen in the back there, taking the video and handling the sound, you know, that's whatever, three more. <laughs> now, it's easier to play small, isn't it? I mean, it's easier to shrink to fit and let other people's needs and opinions pull you away from what's right for you. It's easier to run back down to the safety of the basement instead of rising to the occasion and choosing to touch the sky. But here's the deal, see? When you shrink to fit, you take a hit. I like that one, too. When you shrink to fit, you take a hit. When you willingly make yourself smaller in the face of a challenge, you dishonor the song in you. You dishonor your passion and your purpose. You keep one foot in the basement and one foot out of the basement. And let me tell you, it's really hard to get anywhere like that. I know, because that's what I did. 